Hey everyone, welcome back to the Paid Search Podcast. My name is Jason Rothman. As always, I'm joined by the great Chris Schaefer. Chris, how's it going today? I'm doing great, Jason. Happy uh, happy podcast day to you. We do this once a week. If you guys like what you hear, you want more, we do it every week. We're here every week, and we've been here for a long time. Jason, my long time, long time podcast partner. After all this time, I still don't know what's in your head, what's in your mind, what you're thinking. I can't. If you're a book, you're in a different mm-hmm. language. How you doing, Chris? <laughs> you playing dress up in the backyard? What's with the shirt? You, this is a great. <laughs> this is a great shirt. This yeah. is this is solid masculine energy here. That's a masculine noise. Yeah. So, Chris, we're going to be talking about max conversions today. It's going to be a free flowing discussion. And I have some okay. questions for you, questions for myself, and uh, we'll kind of just be getting into, you know, when do we use it, what you're seeing out there in the wild, and just different aspects of max conversion worlds, you know, that comes up when you're in that world, different aspects that come up when you're okay. doing that and giving that control over on your mm. campaign. Okay. Um, but first, we have a message about up to you, and yeah. then we'll get into it. Most important message. Everyone listen up. This is important. There is a tool. If you are not using it, you are missing out. This is the tool of the year, of the decade. This is the tool to beat all tools. This is optio.com slash PSP to get a three-month free trial of this amazing tool. Everyone else gets a 30-day free trial. You get a two-month free trial of this amazing tool. This thing is designed to improve your Google Ads campaigns at speed it helps you to process through information data that would otherwise be very difficult to crank through it's a wonderful tool for google ads managers if you own a business and you're running google ads if you are an agency if you're a freelancer managing clients it is designed to scale for your needs it has tons of features helping you to write ads adjust bids negative keywords locations Uh, All those things that you worry, did I check that? Did I check that? Forget trying to come up with the ultimate keyword checklist, negative keyword checklist, a campaign management checklist. This is the tool for you. That's optio.com slash PSP. Use the link in the description and let them know that you heard about it on the paid search podcast. Okay, Chris. So yeah, I wanted to talk to you about max conversions. Uh, I find myself using it more and more. And I find myself having good results with it. Uh, but it is, there, there are some things that come up where it's like you can't do everything you can do with manual bids. So just wanted to pick your brain on it. See where you're at with it. We've been kind of uh, dancing around the topic, I feel like, for months. And the topic being max conversions and the topic being like, hey, this is kind of working these days. And it didn't really work in the past as mm-hmm. well. Um, so I think you're using it more and more. I've been using it more and more, but there's definitely some spots where I don't use it and I do manual still. So it's just to start off where, where are you at with it? Like beyond, Oh, it works, you know, works better than it used to core strategy for you. 50% of the accounts you run 10%. Well, I mean, what are we talking here? Max conversions. Um, percentage wise, Maybe up to twenty to thirty percent at this point. From a starting point of one percent, probably. Right. With a starting four, point. Four of, years ago, three years ago. Yeah, a starting point of like no way, no way. That's that. I'm not using that thing. To yeah, maybe about uh, a fifth wow. of the accounts. Um, do you do you like when you turn? I mean, for me, I think um, I'm probably around that number. One out of five. One out of four. One out of six. Something <clears throat> like that. Okay. Um, do you like that number? Are you trying to grow that number? You take it account by account. Does it does it make you upset th- that you're up to a fifth? It is no. I, of of the ones that I have it on, I am. I've made that decision to run max conversions uh, due to certain criteria, which we can get into. Um, but no, I'm very happy. I'm very happy with the ones that do have it, um, and I, I, you know, they fit the bill for what I'm looking for. Um, I feel like anyone who says, you know, they're running 100% max conversions, 
Um, either they've made some major mistakes and pushed too fast, too hard in some areas that they shouldn't have and, and made some big jumps, or they have a very specific clientele where literally sure. every single one matches that criteria. But for me, I work with a wide, wide range of different clients, and many of them do not qualify for max conversions. Yeah, so I guess that's the first kind of point to hit. When when to use it. So I think there's a, a hint in the name, max conversions. It oh, would yeah. be when you're, that's kind of the first thre threshold, right? Like you need to have conversion tracking, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, did. I don't, I'm curious what you would say, but for me, um, I do not even consider it on accounts that, you know, uh, I mean, there's always different scales and in, in, in different metrics and in, in things to consider. But, you know, if I just had to give out a number, if I'm not hitting 20 conversions a month, I don't consider it for that account. Hmm. You think that I, sounds too, too strict? Disagree? Well, I think it's a preference thing. I think the way I've been coming at it is not so much volume. I mean, like... I don't really pay attention to when I turn it on to the volume of conversions. Oh. You know, like if there's none, there's none. I'm I'm so more like more crossing that threshold. Like, are we tracking conversions? Like the conversions okay. we need to track. And then for me, when to use it, like the, the place that's coming up for me is like when a campaign is not working with manual bids oh. and I'm doing everything right. Great keywords, great search terms. That's when I fired it on. And so like, those campaigns where a client wants a hundred dollar cost per lead and you're getting a four hundred dollar cost per lead, mm, okay. and maybe it's in a county that's right next to another county, and the other county is in another campaign that's doing amazing, you're hitting ninety dollar cost per lead, and you're like, Why doesn't this one campaign with all the keywords I want, all the search terms I want, not even close to a hundred, and it's getting the same cost per click as the other campaign next door? I've got nothing to lose. So let me throw on so that's what I've been going to max conversions so if it gets us any conversions it's like that's a big improvement um account definitely needs to have conversions but because of because of the amazing things i've seen happen when i go turn it on on a campaign that wasn't working and then it starts working because of those amazing things i've definitely been rolling it out more earlier for other accounts um before they have a problem Usually, so like when to use it when you don't have a problem, it's kind of like when I know I'm going into it and it's going to be tough. Like I know like it's a housing industry related uh, campaign and I'm going to see like 15% okay. of the search terms and a client is very specific about the cost per lead they want. I'm like, yeah. this is a good candidate. Yes. So I'm okay. also running into yeah. situations like that. And in those spots, I know back in the day, like they would tell you like, hey, you need this many conversions. I see good things when I just turn it on. Have you, have you run into that where you're like surprised? With, like with zero conversions? I've done it. I've done it. Because if you think about it, oh, it God. will run if you don't have conversions on. Sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, if well, you put it, if you put a limit in there, it's probably going to decrease the volume a ton. If see, you're not getting the, conversions. That's the thing that's crazy. Okay. So set up a brand new account and do not and skip the whole conversion setup process. Okay. Don't set up a single conversion not even call from ads, okay? And then go to your bidding setting and try and choose max conversions. It will not let you. It will not let you. It will not let you. It, you cannot set up max. You, you, you have if, max you don't, if you don't have a conversion action? If you don't have any conversion set up at all, it will not no, let that you. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So but what's you're crazy in a spot, is yeah, you right. could have some, some conversions that you set up. Yeah, yeah in the account that you never actually put on your site or you've been running for a year and you've, they've never even been active ever. They've mm -hmm. never even been, de been detected by the tag system. And at least if you have them set up, it'll let you run. So what's kind of interesting is there's kind of a fail safe says, Oh, you don't have any conversions, but once you set it up, you can still have no conversions and run it. And um, I don't know. That's an in that's interesting conversation. I, I never really considered, turning on max conversions in that instance I well think i ever have it's not that i go out of my way to say like oh turn on the account the turn on. it's more like you run for a week you've got you sent out you know you sent your conversions you got your conversions up you run for okay. a week yeah you're not getting volume 
Like something just, you know, when something just feels off. Yeah. And you're just trying things. So, so I have, it's not common, but I've been in spots where I'm like, I'm going to do max conversions and see what, see what it's getting. Just I've also been in, up. just Try to shake it up. I've also been in spots where I've taken over accounts and there's one call from ad conversion a month two zero, no conversions yeah. being yeah. reported. Yeah. And whoever was running it had it on max conversions and it got plenty of volume. Yep. So that's where, so I guess what I'm getting at is like the conversions are important, but It'll still run. Yes. If you're not getting conversions, as long I, as you don't have a cap on that max conversion. Right. What I wonder, and what's always, you know, I, I guess there, maybe there could be some tests you could do, but I've never done the test myself. What if I ran an experiment and did a max conversions with no conversions and did an experiment with a max clicks? How would they run differently? Probably I assume the different. max conversions would have a higher CPC, but what's the driving factor when it gets no positive feedback? That's what other you know, other other account keywords, the how those keywords perform across the board and similar, Google Ads. Similar advertisers, similar uh, industries, and it just kind of pushes what same other... keywords. Maybe they know different keywords have better conversion rates historical. on general. Yeah. Okay. Historical. I mean, they're looking at that for. Yeah. I'm just spitballing. They're looking at that for quality yeah. score. So yeah, it could be that they look true. at that and that's why it runs and that's how it knows to what to bid. It could. Um, but I guess I guess some of the pushback I've gotten when I've worked with clients on like max conversions is you can get low volume. I think is it would you say that's the main drawback from running a max conversion strategy? It can be overcome, but would you say that's the main hurdle you run into? Low volume as in like not spending the full budget? Yeah. Yeah. Um I don't know. I think I feel like you've probably done it more just right out of the gate than I have because I I don't think I've ever set up a campaign and run. No, no. Let's say when you're dial when you're dialed in and you're like, we're getting leads, we're getting a fifty dollar lead. I want to see if we oh. can get a forty five dollar oh, lead. Oh, and the and, and the volume just drops drops off a cliff, or the conversions, you know, maybe just or you you were spending uh. 15,000 a month and you go and it starts, you know, you get a better cost per lead, but it's spending seven or nine. Right. Do you ever run into that? Um, not really with max conversions. If I put a target CPA and I'm too greedy with that target CPA or uh, target ROAS, yes, mm -hmm. but I don't really see that with max conversions. No, it, it tends to, it's kind of like max clicks, but you know, it's, it's max clicks wilder cousin, you know? What, I, what I've seen is if you push it, past the point on the limit when you set up a limit what i want my cost per lead limit to be oh. say you put in 30 dollars, and say the market cost per lead to actually show up number one 20 of the time 30 40 and actually get volume you put in say the market there's 30 and you put in seven dollars i've seen it slow it down to a oh crawl. yeah oh yeah we'll see so, that yeah. okay so let's let's get our definition straight because whenever i say max conversions in no way am I referring to any qualification of the cost per conversion. I leave that entire thing blank because technically max conversions is target CPA bidding without a target CPA. So, so you don't, do, how do you feel about the limit? Do you use it? I do not use it unless I have already implemented uh, two reasons I might use the, the goal setting. The first reason is when I turn on max conversions and it gives me a recommended target CPA, then I'm like, oh, okay, cool. If Google thinks it can hit this goal, I'm going to go for it. The other reason I would do it is if I'm already running it and I want to drop it or, you know, uh, increase yeah. it, you know, ramp one way or the other, ramp yeah. down, ramp up, whatever. Yeah. Seeing as how like most of the time I'm moving from manual to to max conversion because a manual campaign is not working. It's not working because we have a goal in mind. Yeah. And so I do put the goal on there. Um, but I, I've noticed it's sensitive. Like if your goal is not realistic or it's not hitting your goal because you have the wrong keywords or you just don't have a site that's going to convert at that rate and get that cost per lead that you want. And it thinks it can't get you a $30 cost per lead. And that's what you put in there, and it thinks it can only get you a ninety dollars cost per. I've seen it, the volume just come down to oh yeah zero. It, basically, it gets yeah it get it it gets shy about taking any more. It gets risk. accurate. The the yeah the the system 
knows that it can only take so much risk to achieve that goal cost per acquisition. So when it knows that it can't, the the algorithm stops bidding on certain terms. It, it, it might it may have a giant spike in a couple of clicks, and it's and if it doesn't get any conversions on those clicks, boom, it's done again until a, a few days later until it can start getting some more clicks again and you know possibly hit uh, hit those margins again. Yeah, it, it's super cautious. It can be a complete destruction to the account i've i found that to be new for the last year or so like i found my my memory is like 2016 2017 when target cpa was a thing if it wasn't getting the target cpa or a good cost per lead that you wanted to get it could keep going and that's why i think maybe there were such negative feelings about it then maybe it seems a lot more reactive and i would say accurate these days in terms of what you're wanting to get it so another thing comes up chris have you run into spots where maybe someone's running max conversions and they have not given a lot of thought to what a conversion is and what they're actually oh, gosh. calling a conversion? Yeah. So don't you, why don't you walk us through how that needs to be a top of mind discussion anytime you dance with max conversions, defining and thinking about your conversions very thoughtfully. Okay. So let's, uh, I think the easiest way to describe this is to use a physical representation. So let's say that you own a store for ice cream, okay? And you are counting a sale every time someone walks in the door. That means when a, when a family of four walks in and they only order two ice cream cones, the parents don't order, but the kids do. You're saying uh, that there were four sales, Okay, you're over representing the actual income, the actual revenue, the actual value that you're bringing in by only counting the people that come into the store. Okay, that can be absolutely detrimental because imagine, you know, you have someone outside who's just bringing in everyone into your ice cream store and, 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 and they think they're getting a 100% conversion rate. Everybody that walks in is buying, but the fact is they're just walking in. They're not actually buying. And that's the, so when you want to run conversion based bidding, you must assign value where, where value can be assigned. So everyone who's making that purchase, buying that ice cream cone, not necessarily the people that are coming to the point of buying. No, you don't track that. You track the actual thing. So it's for, for e commerce, that means an actual sale. For lead generation, that means they have completed a phone call uh, within a certain time limit or they have. Uh, uh, filled out a contact form. They've qualified their, themselves in some way. Otherwise, you could kill your campaign because suddenly you are just pushing people to the, the algorithms, pushing people to people to your site, thinking that it has a seventy percent conversion rate. When in reality, it's like a five percent conversion rate, and you wonder why you're not profitable. Yeah, you, you wonder why your profits are going down, 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 down because the system thinks it's winning, 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 and it's not. Yeah, you've got to define what conversions you want it to target for. But then, like you're saying, Chris, you have to realize what you're telling it with those yeah. conversions. And in a lot of spots, you can just keep it simple and do um, cost per lead and just track those leads, like lead forms, phone calls. Uh, but in more complex, like you're talking about people walking into a store, half of them end up buying you can really uh, start to utilize that value aspect of the conversion and teach the system to go for a target return on spend, depending on how much value you're assigning to those individual conversions. And then it all comes together and it tries to get you a return on spend. Um, so the conversion aspect is very important. Uh, wh what have you been experiencing when you turn it on? Uh, what do you do for the first like... How, how much rope do you give it? Do you give it like a week? Do you give it a, when you make this decision, are you like, what? Well, hey, you know, we're doing this for a reason. We're going to let it figure it out. What What are your thoughts on launching? Yeah. Um, when I turn it on, uh, first of all, I don't know about you, but when I, if I go from manual or max clicks or something like that to conversion-based bidding, typically I'm going to do it with an experiment. I am not going to go straight in with, you know, a, 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 a straight change from one to the other. Typically I do with an experiment. And then second, as far as timing goes, I'm, I'm turning it on and not touching it. It is no. for me, it is a 
turn it on and let it work. You, you don't micromanage. I mean, you do your normal checks on quality of traffic that, you know, that, that you would usually do, but you do not micromanage this thing. You, you don't try and, uh, over, um, you know, overly control, you know, there, you, you can put bid adjustments with automated bidding for, for conversion, automated max conversions. You can still put bid adjustments. I do not mess with those. You mm. know, I'm going to let it do its thing. And then I'll come back weeks. It depends on how much you're spending, you know, but weeks, months later and, and see how it performed. Yeah. I think, um, if you make the decision to go down this road, you definitely have to respect what you're doing and give it a chance to prove itself. I can't recall being in a spot where I do everything right. Settings, keywords, conversions, uh, and a reasonable cost per lead goal. And then coming back two to four weeks later and saying, wow, this thing isn't hitting it at all. Hmm. Um, it's, it works is from my experience when you do everything you can do to the, everything you need to do to set it up for success. It works. The, the one, um, spot that's tricky is when the volume is really low. So I might have a big account, lots of campaigns, and then one trouble campaign, bad cost per lead, really bad over long periods of time. And you're like, I can't figure out this county. I can't figure out this set of keywords. Let me try max conversions. And it's just low volume in general. And it just goes month after month, no conversion again. But it's not that much money compared to the overall account. That's the only spot I've been in where I'm like, I don't know if it's working or not because it it's still look seemingly low volume and if it starts getting conversions then all of a sudden it's going to work so i just let it keep going uh but generally when i've set it up for success it it works and i would say one week is too short to judge it but i feel like when i look at one week i feel like usually better things are happening because i'm so much contrasting it to a bad manual campaign that wasn't working right that's a good point that's a good point usually whenever we do something like this um you know, uh, it's going to be because we're not necessarily happy with what we're doing now. So that's a good point. I, rarely am I going to look at a manual bid campaign, search campaign and say, you know what this needs? Max conversions. <laughs> I, I, I'm, you know, I'm probably not going to do that. Very rarely would I do that. Um, well, and like, I was, I was, I, yeah, go ahead. I just, I want to push back on what you said. Absolutely. I've had experiences because I do, um, uh, experiments. I will turn on max conversions and compare it to my manual and it might be better, but it's like one, co- you know, the, let's say the manual is getting a $250 cost per conversion. The automated gets a $230 cost per conversion. And I'm like, nope, not worth it. I give it plenty of time and I'm not willing to convert. And I, I cut it off and drop it because I am not willing to go to full automation for a, fraction of a percentage lift on the cost per conversion it's not worth it right and so that brings up like what you know what why do we prefer manual when it's working and i think that it kind of shows the contrast between the two because like i go to max conversions when i can't get it done with manual yeah and i can't get the volume of leads i want and the cost per lead i want so then by definition if i'm not going there then by definition manual is working and i'm getting what max conversions can give me Mm -hmm. the cost per lead I want and the volume of leads I want. I'm already getting that. But on top of that manual still allows me to control everything. And if an advertiser says, Hey, we need more volume this week. Or if I spot a keyword and I'm like, Oh my God, that's the best search term I've ever seen. I'm going to quickly build a little ad group around this, or I'm going to throw this in another campaign and instead of going for number one, 50% of the time, the cost per lead of $40, I'm going to say, you know what? This keyword's so good. I'm going to go for a $100 cost per lead, and I'm going to try to show up number one 99% of the time. You can just do that when you want to do it instantly based on yep. what you're seeing. Yep. And uh, that that control, that's what pulls me to manual and keeps me there. Yep. So that's how I break it down for myself, Chris, is like if I'm getting the cost per lead I want, and getting uh, the volume of leads I want, I'm not seeing a reason to go to max conversions because I'm doing what max conversions can do for me. Uh, but if I think the max conver- the cost per lead can be a lot better, or if I'm not hitting my goal, that's why I try max conversions because I need to 
hit those goals. And because I'm not hitting them, I'm willing to give up the benefits that come from manual, the control. Yes. Yep. So I know we we go about it a little bit differently, like in terms of when we're setting up the max conversions. Yeah. But it sounds like you're also, it's, whatever point you're setting them up at, you have that same breakdown in mind. Like it's all about, am I hitting my goals or not? And if I'm not, that's when to try. Yeah. Or if you I don't think I can. Weigh, yeah. Yeah. You have to, you have to weigh the control factor. Um, I mean, any Google ads manager knows uh, there is a, a sacrifice that you're willing to give in the Google ad system if it can provide better results for you. And, mm -hmm. you know, the problem is it's a lot of lazy people out there <clears throat> that will jump straight to automated bids of some kind right out the gate. And, you know, it's easier. It's easier not to have to think about that stuff and just let the system do it for you. Um, but what they're giving up is control and control takes time. It takes knowledge to understand what you're looking at, what to look for. Um, but, uh, I absolutely do not give up that control unless there are benefits of giving it up. Yeah. And the, the, the manual gives you control. It also gives you the ability to find insights. If like, if you've actually taken the time to find that. So, Again, like big accounts, I'm finding spots where manual just can't get it done. And then I flip on max conversions. Most of the time it can get it done. Um, but then this, on the opposite end of the spectrum, the manual stuff that works amazing, like 38% conversion rates on non-brand, 40% conversion rates on non-brand, hitting what you want, keywords you want to be number one 99% on. You can't really figure that stuff out if you just hand over the keys to max conversions on day one. Yeah. And no, no. it's just going to get you what it gets and, you. You're, you're not going to see those discrepancies. And let me let me bring this up. I don't know if you have this in your notes of a topic or not. But Jason, one factor beyond control that will keep me from going to automated is the fact that a client could have severe issues on quality of lead. Let's go back to the ice cream cone example. Let's say that I'm getting a phenomenal 40% conversion, but people keep coming in and buying the cheapest ice cream cone, or they, they walk in and you know, they're the way they're ordering the, the ice cream cone is so complicated. It's like not worth the effort. They, they don't, they don't even want those kind of clients. You know, they're asking them to blend two flavors together. It's like, listen, I know we're making the sale, but this is not what we want to do. This is not the clientele that we want. Um, max conversions does not differentiate a lead is a lead. And for lead generation, at least this is incredibly important because you know, I'll have healthcare clients, legal clients, um, you know, all kinds of things. And they're like, well, well, yeah, the phone's ringing, but everybody wants this. And yeah, we do that, but that's not really what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Try and fix that with automated bits. Try and tell the automated system, okay, tone this one down, even though it's getting 50% of the conversions, tone this one down and push on this one. You know, that's, yeah, you're, you're, you're it's not the only option, but your main option is to say, well, if I was going for $50 cost per lead, I know that 50% or 40% of my leads are no good, actually. So now I need to lower that cost per lead to account for those quote unquote conversions, quote unquote leads yeah. that actually aren't turning into sales. Mm -hmm. There's a few other options, but um, that's the easy one. That runs you into the issue of, well, then is it going to bid you too low to get that yeah. cost per lead down? You and then the traffic it. quality goes yep. down. Another theme I've seen in Google ads over the years, Chris, I used to give no credit to people who would say uh i need to show up number one a lot because that's where the best leads come from but i always tell them no it's about the cost per lead and some people click the sidebar maybe it has something to do with the sidebar but some people click the old back sidebar in, back in the day yeah yeah, yeah i miss the sidebar yeah that's and funny. uh so uh and i feel i feel like there was nothing to it back then but now i have seen over and over it's like you start bidding too low still get conversions, but it's a lot of garbage. Yeah. So is that a trend that you've noticed or given more credit to over time? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it feels like it's gotten even more severe now that we have it, infinite scroll. Well, I was, I was, I was just about to say it's got to yeah, do something, big. something. It's not just about the user. It's got to do with 
the layout of google.com searches has changed yes. over time so that's got to be influencing it and then there might be something to like google's overall because of ai is putting better search results higher like they're more accurate with what people are searching for like even if someone searched back in the day like uh how many cups of sugar go into this cookie like maybe all 10 results were good but the absolute best result maybe it showed up number one 50 percent of the time in organic and right showed up number three 10 percent whatever and now they're they're just probably getting better at the giving people the results they want same thing in ads probably so possibly people are used to getting what they want on a first click and then therefore so they're trust i don't know they're, they're lining up the best with that first click maybe more often so and then there yeah go ahead it, i was gonna say it's, it's just as much of a google interface search page change as it is google training people on how to use the page and how people end up using the page because and, and google being more accurate with yeah. every single search overall and that changing the search users behaviors yeah if you if you went to google and typically got okay search results and you ended up always kind of scrolling and looking or, or going would, back yeah yeah hit, you know just looking and, and scroll you know going through multiple pages in order to find what you're looking for maybe then as advertisers we would be able to bid and you know hit fourth position sixth position you know stuff like that um and still get good traffic but you're right people i mean if you're not in the top i mean my my, my click-through rates when i am not shown in the top above organic it's non-existent. It doesn't. It doesn't happen. Well, especially anymore. and the conversions. Even when you get clicks, it's oh, like you gosh, look at where your yeah. conversions are coming from. No way. You get no conversions. If if you're going to be serious about getting conversions or spending money, uh, you're going to have to be above organic. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let, let's take a break, Chris. Um, and when we get back after the break, let's talk about how you optimize max conversion campaigns what you what you can do with the bidding okay uh and let's talk about what you focus on if there's not as much to focus on with the bidding and maybe we'll talk about what we because no one knows but we can talk about what we think is possibly going on with with the system like what is it actually doing like how is it actually getting you the cost per lead you want as long as it's reasonable because oh. i think if you give some thought to that it can make you more if you give some thought to that and think about it from the system's perspective it can just help you shape the rest of your campaign so we'll take a break and we'll talk about that right after the break welcome back and remind you about an amazing tool where you can monitor and diagnose performance issues in your google ads account uh if you have not seen <laughs> the graphical interface of this tool uh you're really missing out there you know you you, you get kind of calloused and 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 uh deaf to seeing some of the uh numbers and charts and graphs and stuff in google ads seeing something in a different layout is eye-opening suddenly you see something in, in a different way it shows you on a different kind of chart changing things so that you can you know see different segmentations can be incredible that is what optio can do it can open your eyes to a whole new world let's go on a magic carpet ride go with me to optio.com slash psp and get a two month free trial okay thanks chris so um you set up max conversions, whether it's a manual campaign that's not getting it done for you or based on the industry, based on the history of the account, you take over, you're like, hey, and you know, maybe, you know, Chris, sometimes there's, you step into uh you step into a forest, you, you take over an account, it's got 30 campaigns. Oh gosh. Oh boy. You know, it's got out. five, out. well, hold on. It's got 5,000 keywords in it and, and oh. they've got a big fat check. Oh, there you. we go. Yeah, we now, go. You, okay. now you now come back. <laughs> yeah, you come on back, and you're like, I can't recreate this. Like, I, yeah, this thing is, and it's not that it's like, oh, I don't want to add 50 keywords instead of my 10. It's not like that. It's like the way this person set it up is like either they're not good at their job, but somehow it's working because somehow. it's yeah. working. Yeah. It's probably 99% of the time, 
or the one percent of the time they were a mad genius. Yeah, and you just went on. You just found creativity, greatness, yeah. and but have but I know you've been. I've been there. You doubt you can recreate the success. Oh yeah, oh, even yeah. though it's a horrible setup. Mm-hmm. Fifty mm-hmm. campaigns, five thousand keywords, no rhyme or reason to the list of keywords and the way they're grouped with the ad uh, ad groups. Tons of broad match keywords mixed in. But the goals are good, and they just need someone to take it over. Yeah. The, the goals are being hit. Terrifying. That's where that's another scenario where max conversions can yes. be something to rely on because there's in that spot there's so much data for it. Yes. Okay. Yep. So whether you're coming at it from that or manual isn't working, or it's just you think it's a good candidate and you want to try an experiment, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. Let's say it. it it gets dialed in and you're getting the cost per lead you want. What do you do with your bidding? What control do you have over your bidding? I think people have this question. Do you still optimize for bids? Do you ever change your target CPA? And there's a couple points to hit, Chris, like impression share, um, yeah. ad group level bid. So let me give you a couple scenarios. Let's say you put in a $100 cost per lead and it's getting... Uh, it's getting an eighty dollar cost per lead, and it's it's uh, spending your full budget, but the client wants to spend more, and it's undershooting your goal. Client wants to spend more, and you're looking at your impression share numbers, and you're like, "There is more to get." Yeah. What do you do with your bids? There, do you do you take them from a hundred to one fifty? <laughs> Um, ba- ba- let, let me refer. Do, do I have my, to answer? My, my, my question is okay, do you try to make max conversions better than it's performing? Oh, okay. If it's under, do you take the same mindset of manual bids? I can always make this better, and do you apply that to max? Oh. Let's go back to manual bids. You're hitting your cost per lead goal. You don't sit there and say, oh, I'm hitting my goal. I'm going to yeah. go to the beach. You say, no, no. What's my, how often am I number one? It yeah. can't more, more, more. What, what, how much am I losing to budget? My impression share. Can yeah. I get more at this same cost per lead? Yep. Do you take that mindset to max conversions? Cause I feel like um, a lot of people wouldn't cause it feels yeah. like you're giving up control, but maybe you still have control. Where are you at with all this? Well, honestly, for me, um, I, I'm not going to go to bids first. I'm actually going to go to keywords first. I'm going to go with adding more keywords. I'm going to go with more fishing lines in the water rather than, a, and now if, if it's below. You're, you're going to say, I've got a fishing pole that actually works. Yeah. I'm going to, Let I'm me gonna, throw more of them out I'm going to add 50 more and see if any of those work just as good. Yeah. Because and you're not you're not thinking that's good. That's a good line of thought. You're not thinking, oh, it was my genius bids that got me here. You're yeah, thinking- I, that's oh my magic. god! Something clicked yeah. with this industry, with this website, with what Google knows about users that do these searches, with the history of this one account. Oh my god! Max conversions is actually working really, yes. really good. Yeah. It's my responsibility as a Google Ads manager to feed it, feed it, That's yeah, it. feed it. Yeah, that's where I would go. Now, I, I might change the bids and, and go, go up higher, but. In this scenario, am I limited I, by am, am I limited by budget in this scenario? Well, how would you play it? What, I how would, does that? I, if I if I'm limited by budget, then immediately I would add more keywords and add more budget. It's so scary because you're so like in in the manual world, your first move is I can get more of what I want mm-hmm. by manipulating the bids. In the automated world, it's so scary to yes. change the bids. Yeah. Yeah. That you're yeah. right. It should be the last thing you should do, honestly, if it's actually working. I just give it more. Right. I, I just feed yeah. it. I, f- I keep feeding let, it. Let me go 24 7 instead of yeah. eight to five. Yeah. It's yeah. it's so different than manual. Manual is such a science and so metric heavy that you study, you study, then you try one little thing with it. Am I going too far to say that max conversions, target CPA is more like a throw something into the box and see what comes out and then try it again uh i think it's um it's more a flip the light switch 
did the lights work or not? Yeah. And then yeah. So we're saying the same thing. Oh, you know what? It's like walking down a neighborhood and it's like putting a key in a keyhole and it's being like, does it work to this house? And it's like, <laughs> oh my God, it does. I'm going to go in there and I can go in this, own this house. Here. And then, uh, okay. If that worked, this house works. I'm going to go to the next house and open that one up and see if this key works. It's like a key to me. Like, okay. When Max Conversions works, a, lot, a huge part of it is what Google knows about that advertiser, yes, their search users, the history on that website, the history of that account. But there's also smart things you can do to set it up, right? Like we talked about earlier with the conversions and knowing the limit to give it if you give it a limit, knowing when to turn it on. But to me, it's like a key. Like if it's working, you have you have a magic key Yeah. if, uh, if you have an account where Max Conversions works. But you can also fool yourself very easily because if your conversions are not actually real conversions that are good or you're not costing them the right way, but it can get what you're not doing right and it can get a lot of it, you can fool yourself to thinking. There's a lot with the AI going on these days, Chris. They say hallucination where the AI gives you an answer and it looks so convincing, but it's totally wrong. Right. Like totally. It, yeah. It can write it really well. Yeah. And, it, and you don't know the answer. So it's like, oh, it gives me the right answer 90% of the time. So it gave me another answer. I have no idea what the answer is. So it must be right. That's what happens with max conversions where you set it up for success the wrong way. And it actually achieves success. Um, so, yeah, but you, you feed it. I think that's a good way to think about optimizing yeah. it is feeding it <clears throat> yeah. and getting more when it's actually working the way you want to work. So let's let's wrap it up here, Chris, with what what is it doing? What what's actually happening? Okay. So here's my my thoughts on automated bids. <clears throat> I am not referring to max clicks and um this only really goes for uh target CPA um and <clears throat> target ROAS, target return on ad spend. Uh so those two. On those two, my theory is that uh, with manual bids, you're just, it is black and white. It's matching search terms to keywords, and there's not really any algorithm beyond that. I say with automated bids based on conversions that there is a second algorithm attached to it, and this algorithm does not match search terms to keywords. It matches people humans. to humans, individuals, to profiles. Auctions. To auctions to auctions that's yeah. a great way to say it yep that's it that's and we what don't, I, and, and we we can't do that because we don't have no. we don't know who the people we are. don't have that data and we can't do it fast enough because it does it on an individual basis so, so i agree i think i to me what i think is happening i agree with you that it's a people it's a very people thing and it's yes the reason i use the word auction there is because why don't you step on the mic Oh, I was get on. Talking to myself, I'm giving myself commands this time. Oh, you, oh, you, not me. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, I'm pretty close. No, I was sitting back here. Yeah. Um, the reason I would use the word auctions, Chris, is because um, there's a, there's a there's a search term, but that search term can be searched at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. That search term can be searched uh, when the user is in the zip code versus regularly in the zip code, like anything you want to test. Yeah. Um, so that's why the use the word auction. I agree with you about people. Uh, the one final thing I'll add is I was reading an article today in the financial times about AI. This guy who's in the industry was saying like, you got to slow your roll everybody because yeah. <laughs> we're not there yet. But like, yeah. it's exciting. If we, keep, if we keep going at this pace where the only motivation is profit, and everyone just competes with everyone and we all throw endless money at it. We don't know if it's in five years or 50 years or five months. At some point, we are going to get to the point where the AI is alive. And they're, they're saying it's not there yet. It's not there. Mm -hmm. But they're saying if you keep pushing it, it could get there. And if it gets there before you've planned for it to get there and you don't have controls in place, it's really bad news. So... But the upside is it can do all this great stuff if it if we keep pushing it. Like I'm serious, so it can. But my point this here, is Chris, a cautionary tale. I, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> okay. All week long, I've, uh, I'm doing this thing with this guy who did a great thing as a human. Like he he did, he's studying this business. So I'm going to interview him, okay. and my, I was going to make a joke to him. Like he proved AI doesn't exist and isn't real because I was going like all these people pushing AI. I was going to push back against that and say like. 
what this guy did writing about this company for the last two years following it, thinking about it every week and update. And like, there's no way AI can give me the insights he's giving me. Mm -hmm. But then I changed my mind this morning after reading this article because I was like, no, this is actually happening. And it's getting like, it's going to get re like real. And here's where it comes back to Google. This guy, very experienced, again, Financial Times. Uh, he's in the industry and it was like an opinion piece. He, he was saying, uh, and if you search godlike AI, uh, Financial Times, you'll see it. He was saying that the two companies that have been pushing this and that are above everybody else are OpenAI, which is the chat, GPT, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then DeepMind, which Google bought. Oh. And that's where I was like, I was like, oh, it's about to get real. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, okay, if that, if this guy's this, and he's he invests in the industry, he knows about it like a hundred percent. And he if he was like, if if he thinks it can get this strong, and keep going, and he gave charts too. He gave like, this is how much data an AI could process back in the day. This is how much in twenty fifteen. This is how much it can handle. Six years, it was like a hundred million to one or something, and it was just like that. Like just wow. it's happening. Wow. And if he's saying that one of the two, one of the only two companies at the top of the mountain is DeepMind inside of Google, I thought a few things. The first thing I thought is where they came out and they were like, oh, Chet GPT, we better catch up to it. We got to roll this out. And I think the things they can do on the inside that they're not showing us yet mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are yeah. got to be like gazillion to one compared to what we think about. So then Which makes so, sense when we think about how Google Ads has changed. So where, where and how it's how we how we how we go from like 2016 2018 stop pushing automation on me it never works to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh my god it's actually working on stuff i can never get to work on these problem campaigns yeah and it's doing it over and over and over it happened overnight it seemed like and that's why because it correlates with this boom in ai anyway what he was uh what he was saying is my understanding of ai so far is like what i'm saying is like i don't know how it does it but it basically, these models, these chat things, they look at every piece of information on the internet, every piece uh, on the internet, and they make sense of it. Every piece of data, Chris. Yeah. I, every piece. I. So I here's where it. I'm getting at with Google Ads. What is it doing? Just like we're like, oh, I think I should layer on an observation of people in the market for a move because uh, it's a moving campaign. Or I think I should target high income. Let me see how that works. I think they're testing every test possible imaginable. Possible, yeah. It, it, I, it, for example, on the move thing, what if it is, it knows that a person has recently traveled to a certain zip code, done some searches in that area, and now they've moved back to their original home location and they're searching about homes in that area? I mean, is that the kind of depth? In complexity that this AI system can do that is going to be applied to conversion tracking, you know, for conversion bidding, max it, conversion. Is it, is it, do they know the person has searched mover, mover, mover for the last 90 days? Yeah. Yeah. But yesterday they searched mortgages and now they think they've bought a house. Now it's time. Yeah. So it goes from in the market. We knew they were in the market for a move based on what they searched. So that's what yeah. we can see in the market too hot or ready, you know? Well, um, yeah. It, and it's it's doing way it's testing and seeing way more than our options inside the account. I can probably guarantee you that. Like where in the market settings. So that's what I think it's doing. And so I think if you understand that, it can help you craft these campaigns. What what ideas come from that? Thirty of them. We're not, we're going to go through them right now, or we're not, and we're just going to go through one. But I think the one that comes to mind, Chris, is you can go deeper with your keywords. You can go wider. I should say, not deeper. You can go wider, wider, yeah. and you can take shots you wouldn't take before because if it knows what gets conversions, whatever it knows, you feed it more. So feed it. You spend more money. That's good for Google. Yeah. Good. Uh, so it's a back to a win, win, win. It's all positive here, Chris. It's all positive. All's positive. Um, yeah. When's the last time you took your wife out for dinner? It's been two weeks, Jason. What did you what you what did you spend? What was the bill? Oh. And how many people were there? Was the was your Oh no. I'll take my wife out. Is I mean, have you seen her? I can't take her with anyone else, you know. 
I can't divide right. her. It's just two, not not more. Yeah, no, just okay. me and her. So two people. What was the mm-hmm. bill? About Tip included. I spent four hundred dollars the other night. <laughs> um, what? just me and my wife. Nice. There you go. I really nice. had to question myself. High roller. Nice. A little yeah. too high, but then I thought, I, I don't know. I just what, what what kind of food? Steak. Steak, of course. Yeah. Steak, yeah. Okay. Bone in, bone in ribeye. Did rib she? Eye. Did she order a steak too? Yeah, this time she did. Last time she mm. went with the lobster pasta and steak. Now the thing with the steak, Chris, if you ever been to a steakhouse and they tell you, "Hey, the plate is so hot, if the steak's a little undercooked for you, just cut it open just, and put just, it down on the plate because it'll wait. cook it." Yeah, and it actually did. <laughs> yeah. Now, Jason, your steaks, medium, medium rare, well, medium. Okay, okay. I, yeah, I what, like do you, what do you do? I like medium. I found that medium rare sometimes, depending on the cut, is just too chewy. I don't want to sit there yeah. and chew forever. So, okay. Well, good. All right, Chris. Take us out here. All right. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, you can reach me at chrisschafer.com for all kinds of help with your Google Ads work. I'm happy to help out.